I was given a research on elf alpha plant, what would I have started with? It's obvious that I will collect the samples first. How will I do that? Let's look at this presentation and you will find all your answers to this question. Let's start. Content. First of all, we will look at the definition of ethnobotany and then we will go towards the source of data. Then we will look at the methods of study and last but not the least, we will have a look on ethnobotanical techniques. Let's start. Ethnobotany. Ethnobotany is a study of how people of a particular culture and region make use of indigenous, that is native, plants. Ethnobotany is a multidisciplinary science encompassing botany, anthropology, economics, and linguistics. Plants provide food, medicine, shelter, tires, fibers, oils, resins, gums, soaps, waxes, latex, tannins, and even contribute to the air we breathe in. Let's look at the sources of data. The sources of data of ethnobotany include depicting past and present relationship of plants and human beings are the major tool of study of ethnobotany. Richard Evans Schultz, who was known as the father of ethnobotany and Dr. S.K. Jain, father of Indian ethnobotany, mentioned the sources are archaeological, literary, herbarium and field sources. These sources may vary and depending upon the interest and training and objective of investigator or the explorer. The sources of data include fossils, archaeological resources, obsolete literature and travelogues, sculptures on temples, ethnographies, gazetteers, herbaria, museum, reports of forest department and field studies. Fossils are the remains of dead plants. Archaeological resources, we will look at this in the further slides. Obsolete literature. Obsolete literature includes the data which has not been observed by a scientist or any experienced person. Then we have ethnographies. We will look at this in the further slides too. Then we have gazetteers. And after that, I will tell you about herbaria, museum, and what's a forest department. A forest department is a government organization which deals with the growth of plants and other mayors which reduce plant production. Fossils. Fossils are the preserved remains, impressions, or traces of any once lived thing. These things can be plants, animals, or even buildings. Different kinds of plant remains of the past are collected, identified, and documented by people of pre- and pro-historic periods. Water and layering of sediments is usually necessary for fossils to form. So fossils are often formed in rivers, lakes, estuaries, and they can be found in areas that were rivers, lakes, or estuaries in the past. The old plant fossils are about 500 million years old and were found in Argentina. I have attached some pictures of the fossils. Then we have our archaeological resources. What is archaeobotany? Archaeobotany is defined as a study of interrelationships between ancient plants and people based on the identification and interpretation of plant remains recovered from archaeological sites. Archaeobotany remains are often classified into two analytical groups, macro and micro botanical remains. The distinction relates whether or not botanical specimens are visible. That, that is that if they are visible, they are known as macro botanical remains. And if they are invisible, they are known as micro botanical remains. 
This is an archaeological site where you can see some plants and this site is Texila and then we have another archaeological site where is Rutas Park. Then we have obsolete literature and travelogues. Obsolete literature is also known as grey literature. Why? Because it is the literature which remains unattended or neglected by the people. Here the word people includes the scientists, the experienced persons. And what is travelogues? Travelogues are the books, films or illustrated lectures about the places visited by or experienced by of travelers. These provide valuable information as to how some plant species influence the social and cultural lifestyle of tribes. If proper studies are initiated on ancient literature, vast data in plants and their different uses can be known. Sculptures on Temples Sculptures in the art of making two or three dimensional representative or abstract forms, especially by carving stone or wood. For ethnobotanical studies, the sculptures on temples and religious monuments are good source of information. The art and paintings depict plants, species known during those times. I have attached some pictures of the sculptures. This is the Uch Sharif in Pakistan. Then we have ethnographies. Ethnography is a specific kind of written observational science which provides an account of a particular culture, society or community. The fieldwork usually involves spending years and years in a society or spending your life with local people and learning about their ways to live life. Herbarium a herbarium is a collection of preserved plant specimens and associated data used for scientific study. I have attached some pictures of an herbarium. Here you can see that this is an herbarium sheet where some of the plants are preserved. Now is the museum part. This is a plant museum. It is in U.S. It is known as the Henry B. Plant Museum. Now we have methodologies of ethnobotanical technique of ethnobotanical field techniques. Firstly, we have select study area, then we have socio-economic conditions of that area, then we have field interviews, qualitative analysis. Informant consistency factor, fidelity level, frequency citation, use value and use report. From these methods, we will figure out how the data can be uh, accumulated for the plant we are studying. Thank you for listening to my presentation.